as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun, present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest. Blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold! Gold discovered in the Yukon! A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. There's no one that can make a better cereal than Quaker Puffed Wheat. It's neat. And when you hear the shooting, you're darn tootin' that Quaker makes the ones shot from guns. You bet, fellas and girls. For the real McCoy, remember, both Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice are the ones shot from guns to make them extra crisp and tender. A delicious breakfast treat. <laughs> After leaving the waterfront community of Jackknife, Panamint Prindle and his bloodhounds named Misery migrated to the town of Windfall in search of gold. The search had been discouragingly unsuccessful, and in order to feed himself and his dog, the wiry old Texan was forced to do odd jobs during the day. At night, he worked as a watchman in Windfall's bank. He sat on the bank early one stormy night in late fall. A heavy rain fell outside, and as he listened to the muffled sounds of rain, thunder, and lightning, the fury of the storm seemed to increase. Panamint wished misery were with him, but Mr. Prentice, the bank president, refused to allow the dog in the building. <sighs> and misery being such a good watchdog, too. Shaking his head over the banker's short-sightedness, Panamint <clears throat> yawned deeply. <clears throat> After a day spent chopping wood, he was tired. He fell into a light sleep when a noise at the back door of the bank roused him. Hey, uh, what? Panamint listened tensely for a moment and then moved to investigate. Well, let's... He stopped at the door and waited, but there was no further sound. He decided to open the door and look outside. He unlocked the door. He was opening it slowly when someone on the outside pushed it open wide. Get in there. Hey, what you... Two men whose faces were covered with bandanas stood in the doorway. Get your hands up. You're covered. Why? Why? Back what? inside, my friend. Don't try to call for help. Hey, what's the idea? It's a holdup. Why, you dirty polecat? I'll show that you. Whatever he's going for his gun. Oh, you trying it, old timer. Oh, let go. Drop that gun or I'll break your arm. Oh, let go, you polecat. Oh. Uh, he dropped the gun. Yeah, gag and tie him while I get a hold of him. A few moments after the thieves left the bank with their loot, Panamint freed his wrists. He took a knife from his pocket and slashed the ropes around his ankles. Then he snatched his gun from the floor where it had fallen and ripped the gag from his mouth as he ran to the door. Stop! Stop, you polecat! Through the heavily falling rain, he saw the fleeing bandits riding away from town and fired at them. But they were out of range. Without a horse, Panamint had no hope of overtaking them. So he ran to the hotel where he knew Sergeant Preston was staying. <laughs> Having heard the shot, Sergeant Preston was on his way to investigate when he met Panamint. Quickly, Panamint described what had happened. They were heading east when last I saw them, Sergeant Preston. Maybe you'll be able to follow them. The storm will wash out their tracks, Panamint. Oh, Dad, rather I hadn't thought of that. I don't think my bloodhound misery could follow a scent in this storm either. King and I'll do our best. I'll go to the livery stable and get my horse. Come on, King. <laughs> Meanwhile, the storm subsided to a steady downpour. 
Slade Dimmock and Scrapper were but a short distance east of town and were riding hard when Slade's horse stepped into a hole in the trail. The animal stumbled. Easy, easy. Though the frightened horse was able to stay on his feet, Slade was thrown to the ground. Uh, Slade, what happened? Low-coat critter stumbled in there. Throw me. Are you hurt? Uh, that horse might be. Take a look at its leg. If he's gone lame. There he is. You'll not be able to travel fast from now on. All a blasted luck. Ours has gone bad, all right. First, that night watchman somehow got free of his ropes and opened fire on us. Yeah, and Sergeant Preston's in Winfield. He'll be on our trail pronto with that dog of his. With a lame horse, there's not a chance about running him. There's only one thing to do. What? See that stand of timber ahead? What about it? There's a hollow tree there. They'll hide the loot in it. I know about it because I can't. Why oh, leave a fortune in gold and cash in a tree? That's better than being caught with it on us. Well, the loot's evidence enough to jail us, all right. We'd be smarter to bury it. If the ground shows signs of digging, Preston's dog might nose around and uncover it. The tree's our safest bet, Slade. No one will think of looking there. I hope not. Come on, I'll show you where it is. A short time later, the storm stopped. The partners were some distance from the timber where they had hidden the loot. As they expected, Sergeant Preston appeared and called on them to halt. Oh, 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 oh. The sergeant had Yukon King with him. And in answer to the policeman's questions, they said that two riders had passed them on the trail. It was about 10, 15 minutes ago, Sergeant Preston. Uh, how come you're looking for them? I wanted for robbery. Where are you two going? We, we were going to Juniper to look for jobs. If Slade's horse weren't lame, we'd help look for those bank robbers, Sergeant. Give me a description of them. Uh, one was a big critter, about the size of my partner. Yeah, oh. The other was short and heavy set. But his, his hat was pulled low over his eyes. We couldn't see his face. They went by so fast, we didn't get a close look at either one of their faces. Well, thanks for the information. I may see you in Juniper. Right. Juniper! Right, right, well, we got away with it. Now we can go back to the woods and pick up the loot. No. We're going to Juniper like we told Preston. What? In a week or so, it'll be safe back this way, pick up the loot, and start moving toward the barn. Get him, boy. Easy. Come on, get him. As Slade and Scrapper continued east at a leisurely pace, Panamint Prindle headed for his cabin east of Windfall. After giving the banker a complete report of the robbery, he felt depressed and dispirited. Approaching the two-room shack that was a temporary home, he heard Misery barking a welcome. <laughs> I'm coming, Misery! I'm coming! After greeting the devoted but mournful-looking bloodhound, Panamint lit an oil lamp and threw several logs on the embers in the fireplace. Then, drawing a chair as close to the flames as possible, he sat down. Misery sat beside him, listening sympathetically to his master's account of the night's adventure. Yeah, that's how it happened, Misery. When I told the banker, he fired me from a watchman job. Of course, the robbery wasn't my fault, but Mr. Prentice blamed me for opening the back door. Things could be worse. We got a snug roof over our heads. There's lots of wood free for the chopper around here. As long as folks are willing to buy firewood from us, we'll not starve. Uh, but it'll take a lot of chopping to keep us in victuals. The morning dawned bright and clear after the storm. Panamint and Misery were up early. The wiry old Texan dressed quickly and hurried to town with Misery at his heels. He inquired about Sergeant Preston at the trading post. Uh, Preston hasn't come back to town yet, Panamint. Well, I figured he'd be back by this time. As soon as he gets here, he'll probably want to see you. But I reckon so. I'll have to identify those polecats. You might want more than identification. You see, Mr. Prentice, the banker, suspects you were in cahoots with mm -hmm. the robbers. Yeah, me? In cahoots with crooks? That's what he says. He's loco. I told him what happened. I'll go over to the bank right now I and tell him. I were you. He's doggone mad. Well, so am I mad. I never stole anything in my life. And as far as working with crooks is concerned... I'll simmer down. Simmer down. down. I'll... I he... don't believe Prentice, and neither does anyone else. He's Why? Found. He... he can't prove what he said. He sure can't. Meantime, he... take my advice and stay away from Prentice. Well, well, I've got other things to do right now anyway. Such as what? Chopping wood to keep me in misery and food. I... Would you lend me your horse and wagon for a few days, Hank? It'll make the job a lot easier for me. And I'd return the favor by keeping you supplied with firewood. Well, that suits me fine. Where'll you find wood? 
trees around town have been pretty well thinned out. There's a stand of timber east of my place that hasn't been touched by an axe, Hank. I'll get the wood there. Mm, good enough. Help yourself to the horse and wagon and... Uh-oh. Hey, what's wrong? J.D. Prentice, the banker's daughter, is heading this way. You know, she reminds me of a youngster I knew in Texas. <laughs> Janie's the nicest ten-year-old I ever met. Too bad her dad's such an ornery old Jasper. Hello there, Panaman. Howdy, Miss Janie. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Misery. On your feet, Misery, old fellow. That's no way to speak to a lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Oh, Panaman, I do like you and Misery. Uh, what brings you to the trading post, Janie? You want to buy something? No. I saw Panaman and Misery come here. And I wanted to speak to them. Well, go right ahead, Janie. I don't believe you helped those crooks rob the bank, Panamint. Hmm? I know Sergeant Preston won't believe it either. Uh, <clears throat> now, Janie, no one believes Panamint's a crook. Your dad's just upset by the robbery. He, he doesn't mean that. That ratted old buzzard. What did you say, Panamint? Oh, I... <clears throat> I've got to go for Hank's horse and wagon, Janie. Want to come along? Yes, I'd like to. Come on. Don't you have a wagon and horse of your own, Panaman? Oh, I've got lots of wagons, but none for a hauling job. Where do you keep your wagon? In the shack where I live. Next time I come to town, I'll bring you one. You'll find the harness gear on the rack in the shed, Panaman. I'll find it all right, Hank. Go ahead, Miss Janie. Misery, go and get the wagon set to travel. Panamint, what kind of a wagon are you going to bring me? A toy wagon? Or what kind do you have? Chuck wagon? Ranch wagon? Stagecoach? Prairie schooner? Prairie schooner? What's that? You mean you don't know? I never saw one. Well, it's not right for a youngster like you to grow up without knowing all about covered wagons. Covered wagon? Oh, that's just another name for prairie schooner. I'll bring you one of those wagons as soon as I get some glue to put it together. I have the glue, Panamint. I could put it together by myself. Right, in that case, I'll bring the wagon to you first chance I get. Oh, might not be a good idea for me to deliver it to the house, though. Your dad feeling about me like he does. Oh, don't worry about that, Panamint. I'll find a way to get the wagon. I want to know what a covered wagon, I mean a prairie schooner, really looks like. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, there's no beating this eating, fellas and girls. For breakfast every morning, enjoy a heaping bowl full of delicious, crisp, Quaker-popped wheat or Quaker-popped rice. Top it with milk and sliced bananas. Mmm, mmm. It hits the spot. And listen, don't miss out on the exciting surprise at the end of the program. You can be as lucky as Janie. Yes, you can get a building kit to make a scale model covered wagon just like the one that the old-timer Panamint Prindle gave to Janie. And there's even more to this sensational offer. Grab a pencil and paper now. Be ready. Keep listening. Now to continue. With the promise of a covered wagon of her own, Janie lightheartedly left Panaman. The old Texan harnessed Hank's horse to the wagon, and soon he reached the woods east of town. There he drew rein and went to work. All that week he labored in the woods. When he felled a sufficient number of trees, he hauled them to his shack. There he sectioned and split some of the logs. While he was in Windfall, selling his firewood, Slade Dimmock and Scrapper approached the woods. They had left Juniper after having met Sergeant Preston a second time. Scrapper was gloating. Yeah, we sure fooled that policeman, Slade. He didn't even know we sent him on a wild goose chase. <laughs> he believes the bank robbers passed us on the trail that night and figures he lost track of them. Yeah. He told me he was going back to Windfall to try to get more information about the robbery from the bank. Eh? Much good it'll do up. All we have to do now is pick up the money and head for the border. I was good. Hey! Oh, 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 hold on. As the partners drew rein at the edge of the forest, their eyes widened with dismay and surprise. Someone's been chopping trees. The hollow one's gone. No, no, it can't be. It is. It's gone. The cash and gold from the robbery's gone. Easy, steady, boy. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. 
Look at these wagon tracks, Slade. What about them? Whoever chopped the wood loaded it into a wagon. Well, anyone can see that. We'll follow these wagon tracks. Right. Easy city, boy. All right, let's go. Come on, get in there. Go. When Panamint reached home with Misery a short time later, he found Slade and Scrapper investigating the wood pile behind the cabin. Assuming they wanted to buy firewood, Panamint said... Howdy, gents. The wood's for sale if you want to buy it. We're looking for a particular piece of wood. It's part of a tree you chopped down, a hollow tree. Hollow, you say? That's right. Hmm. There was a hole in it about the length of my arm. Where is it? Say, your voices sound familiar. Yeah, and you look familiar. I've met you somewhere before. All we want is that particular tree you cut down. Where is it? Well, now, gents, that's hard to say. I've... Great sakes alive. Now I know where I saw you before. You're the bank robbers. I recognize your voices. Oh, you too, eh? All right, get your hands up. I'll go out, kill him. No, 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 shoot, Misery. Then shoot him up. Quiet, Misery. Quiet down, fella. Keep your hands up. Search him, Slade. Oh, you searching me. I'm not armed. I'll see for myself. Scrap on that dog. I'll let him have it. No, no, don't shoot, Misery. He don't mean any harm. What's he barking at? He recognizes the rider heading this way, that's all. He's not trying to make no trouble. Please don't shoot him. That sounds like a youngster. Yeah, it's a girl. That's Janie Prentice. What do we do, Scrapper? There's no use letting us see us here. You, mister. Yeah? Go into your cabin. We'll be right behind you with a gun on you. We'll go in the back way. Meet that youngster at the front door. But... There's no time for argument. Walk to the cabin. When the kid comes in, talk to her and get rid of her pronto. Savvy? I savvy. Good. Now get going. Slade and Scrapper remained in the back room of the shack with the door partially open. Concealed from view, they could listen to the conversation as Panamint greeted Janie in the next room. Janie, what in the world brings you here? Doggone it, child, you shouldn't have come this far from town. Daddy gave me a new pony, Panamint, so I thought I'd use him to come here and get the wagon you promised me. Wagon? The covered wagon, remember? Oh, yes, sure thing. The parts are here on the table, Janie. I thought by coming here, I'd save you a trip to our house. Sergeant Preston's there talking to Daddy about the bank robbery. Sergeant Preston, you say? Yes. He wanted to know if Daddy had a record of the serial numbers of the stolen paper money. But Daddy said he didn't have it. Oh. Well, here's the wagon, Janie. Now, all you have to do is glue it together. Thanks a lot, Panamit, but... You're welcome, Janie. Now, you get back to town pronto. But Panamit... It's not safe to be here, Janie. Uh, so far from home, I mean. You get along now. I've got home, but you said a prairie schooner was a covered wagon. What's it covered with? Oh, I clean forgot there should be a canvas top to it. But I don't have any canvas, Janie. What'll I use for covering, Panamint? Hmm, well, I reckon you'll have to use something. Oh, this piece of paper ought to do the trick. Yes, sir. It ought to do the trick, all right. Um, I have no scissors to cut it, but I'll draw cutting lines on it for you. You give it to your daddy when you get home now. He'll be able to cut it to size for you. Janie's request for a wagon top gave Panamint an idea. He knew the two robbers were listening in the next room, but he felt reasonably sure they couldn't see him. He picked up a piece of paper, and after hurriedly scribbling a few words on it, he handed it to Janie. After it's cut out now, this will fit the wagon as snug as you please. Now go along home and take misery with you. But why should I take him? He's not safe here. He might be shot. I, I, I mean, well, he'll see you safely home. Take him with you and clear out of here now. All right, Panamint. No but... time for palaver now. You get going pronto. Well, thanks for the wagon, Panamint. You're welcome to it, child. Now, Misery, you go with Jenny. You stay with her. Savvy fella? <laughs> oh, don't look so mournful, Dad Rabbit. I'm only trying to save your hide. You can't stay with me. <laughs> don't go and get going, both of you. Half an hour later, Janie drew rain in front of her house. When she went inside, Misery was at her heels. Sergeant Preston and John Prentice were in the living room. And as soon as he saw the bloodhound, the banker exclaimed, That dog, where did he come from? Daddy, it's Misery, Panamint's dog. I know who he is. How did he get in here? I brought him in. Oh. Look, Daddy, huh? King and Misery know each other. They've met before, Janie. Say, you have quite a handful there. Yes, what are you carrying, Janie? A wagon I got from Panamint. I'm going to glue it together. Oh, Panamint, that worthless... Jenny, I wish you wouldn't talk to that old man. I like him, Daddy. He gave me this wagon and told me to give it to you. Will you cut this piece of paper for the top? Will you do it now, Daddy? Panamint drew lines on the paper so you know how to cut it. I... Well, what's wrong, dear? He didn't draw lines on it. He wrote something on it. 
What did he write? It says, help, bank robbery. Hey, Janie, let's see that paper. Here you are, Sergeant Preston. Thank like you, dear. Janie, you said you got this paper from Panamint? That's right. I went to his place and he gave me this wagon. He said it's a prairie schooner. Prentice, I'm going to Panamint's place. Yes? If this note means what I think it does, I'll arrest the bank robbers. Come on, King. <laughs> A short time later, Sergeant Preston drew rein near Panamint's shack. Misery was there ahead of him. Oh, boy, oh, easy now. Preston saw the two horses tethered to the side of the log building and drew his gun. Meanwhile, inside the shack, Scrapper's voice was sharp as he asked... For the last time, Panamint, what did you do with that log? I'm trying to remember all the folks I sold wood to. It's hard to tell who might have gotten that particular log. Well, maybe a pistol weapon will make it easier to remember. Now, take it easy, Slade. Panaman couldn't stand up to that kind of treatment, but we got to get that loot. What? Loot? So that's what's in that holler all yeah. day? So you'd better remember, Panaman, while you're still able to think. Get your hands up. Sergeant Preston! Get him, Scrapper. Let him have it. Don't turn. No! That's Preston's bullet oh, through Scrapper's arm. Panaman threw his weight against Slade. No. No. Slade's shot went wild. No. This and later, Preston commanded. Drop your gun. Slade, or I'll break your arm. Slade, do something. Gun this, Monty. My arm is busted. Follow orders. Slade, or I'll break yours. All right. I give up. You're both under arrest in the name of the Crown. They're the bank robbers, Sergeant Preston. I read your SOS, Panama, so I knew they were here. The loot they stole is hidden in a tree I cut down. I didn't tell them, but I put that log aside. Because it's a special kind of wood I can use in Whitland wagons. Oh? I figured to use it for making a couple of stagecoaches. Where is the log? Right there beside the fireplace. Oh, I... <laughs> These poor cats were so riled up, they never spotted it. I'll keep them covered while you get the loot. Right, Sergeant. That's right. the log scrapper. If we'd only spotted we'd it, we'd have grabbed the money and been out of here. Yeah, here it is, Sergeant Preston. This is the bag they took from the safe at the bank. I saw them take it. That's all the evidence I need. After Slade, Dimmock, and Scrapper were jailed, Sergeant Preston and King returned to John Prentice's cabin in Windfall. The banker examined the loot and said... Well, it's all here, Sergeant Preston, every bit of it. I'm certainly glad you recovered it. Well, I don't deserve the credit, Prentice. Panamint's the one who was responsible for its recovery. Panamint Prindle? What did he do? The SOS he sent us on the wagon top did it. That was a clever way to let us know the thieves were at his place. The wagon? Well, I never thought a toy like that would help solve a bank robbery. <laughs> and to think I misjudged Panamint. I thought he was working with those crooks. You should have known better. Panamint is completely honest. I'm sorry I was harsh with him, Sergeant Preston. But I'll make it up to him, I promise you. I hope you do, Prentice. Meantime, I have a report to file now that this case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Well, say, you never know what a hobby like building scale model western wagons will turn to gold. And just because Panamint gave Janie a real authentic covered wagon with a covering just like the old prairie schooners, as they call them, he got his SOS to Sergeant Preston. It isn't everybody who knows an old-timer like Panamint Prindle who can carve out swell western wagons. But listen, here's good news for you fellas and girls. Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice are offering friends of Sergeant Preston a building kit to make the same kind of scale model covered wagon you heard about in today's story. And the covered wagon kit is just one of a whole collection of five western wagon kits you can get. Every wagon is the McCoy, an accurate model of the famous old wagons of the Wild West. Now just listen to the five different wagon kits you can get. One, a stagecoach. Two, a chuck wagon. Three, a buckboard. Four, a Great Plains freighter. Five, a covered wagon. Called a prairie schooner like the one you heard about today. And remember, the fun is, you build them and paint them just the way Janie was going to do. Your western wagons come in knockdown form of plain, light, durable basswood. They're big bottles, each four and a half or more inches long. And you girls, like Janie in today's story, will have just as much fun as the boys putting these scale model western wagons together. Full, simple instructions come with every kit. Also, a money-back guarantee. You'll be proud to have these models on your mantle, desk, or dresser. They're real collector's items. And you'll have lots of fun playing with them, too. You know, even the wheels of these wagons turn. And you can steer them. Hurry, hurry. It's first come, first served. 
Get these exciting Western wagons before any of your pals get them. Here's how easy it is to get any one or the special offer of all five. First, get a package of swell-tasting Quaker-popped wheat or Quaker-popped rice. Most stores now have special new packages that tell all about the scale model Western wagons. And they have a handy order blank on top with a list of the five Western wagons on it. You just check the Western wagons you want. Or you can send right now, tonight. Just get out a piece of paper. Then write your name, address, and the name of the wagon you want. Stagecoach, chuck wagon, buckboard, Great Plains freighter, covered wagon. For each wagon, send 25 cents and a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice. Send to Wagons, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. I'll write that down now so you won't forget it. And remember the special offer. For all five scale model Western Wagon building kits, send only one dollar and a box top from Quaker Buffed Wheat or Rice. Remember, only 25 cents and a box top for any one wagon. Just one dollar and a box top for the whole collection. So write the address down now. Mail to Wagons, W-A-G-O-N-S, Wagons, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. Hurry, send for yours before the limited supply is gone. Do it tonight. In Dawson, Sergeant Preston reported to the inspector. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, inspector. Sergeant, Shotty Parker and Moose Delroy have broken out of prison. Parker and Delroy? They're two of the smartest crooks I've ever captured, sir. They are smart. And if they're as clever at hiding as they were in escaping, you'll have a hard time finding them. But that is your assignment. Sergeant Preston expected a difficult time in tracking down the escaped convicts. But the perils and surprises that he met were almost overwhelming. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday at the same time by Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. It's a circus to eat muffins, the round shredded wheat. Get muffins shredded wheat. M U F F E T S muffins. 100% whole wheat, crisp, crunchy, golden good muffins, the round shredded wheat. Muffins, the round shredded wheat. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.